The U.S. tightens its grip on AI chip flows. If it's China, not the United States, determining the future of AI on the planet, I think that is, the stakes of that are just profound. NVIDIA's stock drops on the news. Shares of NVIDIA fell as much as 5% Monday morning. Why is the U.S. doing this and what does it mean for AI development? There are two arguments here. Uh, one is defense and national security. And the second is um, the use of consumer data and where some of the data centers uh, are going to be built. Today is Monday, January 13th, and this is the issue from VOA. Hi everyone, I'm Lori London. And I'm Scott Walterman. I genuinely believe the most consequential thing happening in the world right now is this scale, pace, and breathtaking speed with which AI is going to transform the global landscape. The Biden administration has released new restrictions on chip sales and other technology used in artificial intelligence. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. It's either going to work for us or it's going to work against us. And in order for it to work for us, we have to stay ahead and we have to shape the rules of the road. The Biden administration put forward the first international set of standards on artificial intelligence codified by the U.N. General Assembly. There's more work to be done on that front. The Biden administration has made the investments to ensure we have the lead in AI right now. But if it's China, not the United States, determining the future of AI on the planet, I think that is, the stakes of that are just profound. The proposal has raised concerns from the chip industry and had an almost immediate impact on their business, with shares of NVIDIA falling as much as 5% Monday morning after the announcement. More on that now from Reuters correspondent Alex Cohen. The new regulations are aimed at keeping advanced computing power in the United States and among its allies, while finding more ways to block China's access. The U.S. will place new limits on advanced graphics processing units, or GPUs, which are used to power data centers needed to train AI models, most of which are made by NVIDIA. The company called the rules sweeping overreach and said the White House would be clamping down on technology that is already available in mainstream gaming PCs and consumer hardware. The restrictions do not apply to gaming chips. The regulations cap a four-year effort by the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden to hobble China's access to advanced chips that can enhance its military capabilities and seek to maintain U.S. leadership in AI by closing loopholes and adding new guardrails to control the flow of chips. While it is unclear how President-elect Donald Trump's incoming administration will enforce the new rules, the two administrations share similar views on the competitive threat from China. The regulation is set to take effect 120 days from publication, giving the Trump administration time to weigh in. The policy would also impose new rules on companies involved in data centers like Oracle, Microsoft, and Amazon, whose shares also fell Monday morning. Reuters correspondent Alex Cohen. You know, Lori, this is incredibly complex. Um, there's a there's a there's a worldwide race here going on, like not unlike the the moon race between the Soviets and the and the United States in the 60s, who can develop the mm -hmm. best. AI yeah. technology. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, um, you know, these chip companies are saying, you know, it's not really, that's hogwash, it's not national security. So who knows? It's very complex. Uh, let's talk to somebody who, who can uh, sort it all out for us. Joining us now to understand the implications of the rules is Balaji Padmanabhan, director of the Robert H. Smith School of Business Center for Artificial Intelligence in Business at the University of Maryland. So thank you very much for um, being able to join us to talk about this. Love to. Tell us what the Biden administration did today. You know, there, there have been a lot of export control laws in place regarding uh, uh, U.S. AI technology. Right? and it's chips as well as AI models. And, uh, you know, there were two things today that were that I noticed. One was this uh, three-tier categorization of countries into which, uh, you know, certain restrictions are placed in terms of export of some of the most advanced AI chips, uh, as well as some uh, specifications on uh, closed AI models and uh, the restriction on 
uh, exporting closed AI models to certain countries. Uh, so, so these are the main things. And I, I think that a, a very important question is why, right? What's the motivation for uh, doing this? And, um, you know, I, I think if you look at the discussion around what I've noticed is that the semiconductor industry is generally against this, right? saying that, hey, you know, we shouldn't be restricting uh, AI chips, et cetera, because some of this is already widely available and so on. Uh, but the administration is making a point, from, from what I can see, there are two arguments here. Uh, one is defense and national security. And the second is um, the use of consumer data and where some of the data centers uh, are going to be built. Now, you could argue that the data centers also have a very important security aspect, right? Because if consumer data is, um, you know, potentially if U.S. consumer data is in the hands of uh, an adversary, potentially bad things can happen. And, and we've seen some of the TikTok controversy around uh, that aspect. So, so these are the two motivations, I think, that are being put forth for these laws. Um, but the, but the, I think the jury is somewhat out in terms of uh, figuring out whether the expert control laws will actually achieve some of the goals. And it sounds like the industry, there are concerns that, that while this may be an attempt to balance national security concerns, really risks some unintended and lasting consequences for the U.S. economy and its global competitiveness. Do you, do you see that the case? I mean, I, I suppose our chips, if we can make them, possibly someone else can too. So, so that's actually a very <clears throat> interesting point. Uh, I think the U.S. and uh, some other uh, Western nations have an advantage when it comes to chip manufacturing technology. Uh, because there is a uh, the process is complicated. There is uh, specific technology that's taken uh, years to develop, fine tune access to machines that make things that are used in the semiconductor industry. And I think in all of this, U.S. and some of the Western nations have an edge, right? And and some other countries, and particularly China, gets mentioned a lot, um, has been trying to build it up, but I think. If, if you know they, they're not yet at at the U.S. scale, right? And so that's where the technology seems to be at this point. Now, the argument that's being made is that if you restrict these things, then um, potentially the other countries this will spur innovation, and they're going to catch up, and eventually our companies will lose the ability to sell into those markets, right? That's the argument that's being made on the other side. But there is also, I think they're also making an economic, um, the Biden administration is also making an economic argument in that we lead chip design right now and countries like China copy our chips. So we can't give them these chips to copy. So I, I think the economic argument uh, is, is, is a good one. Um, but I, I think here, you know, if, if you, what I feel is, is the, the other economic argument that I've seen here, which um, does make sense uh, somewhat, is the data centers. Uh, there's a lot of economic activity around data centers in the U.S. and in, in other countries. And, you know, if you look at the things that people understand, right, so you, uh, you know, a consumer today, a U.S. consumer goes and logs into ChatGPT and does something. Right. So presumably, let's say they, they're using it for some very advanced things. They upload some presentations and say, hey, you know, summarize this for me, et cetera. So this is something we can ask of today's high end AI models and they give you responses fast. But where are these queries being processed? Right. These are being processed in data centers that are optimized specifically for AI with very, very high compute requirements, very, very high energy requirements, very, very high uh, you know, latency and response requirements and so on. And so every interaction that a U.S. consumer is going to have on a mobile phone or on a computer using these AI models is going to run somewhere, right? And so the, uh, these companies are now scrambling to build out these data centers in places. And uh, the Biden administration, I think, wants all of that to happen either in the U.S. or in countries that are favorable. So the economic argument there is the growth around a lot of these things and the investments in data centers. 
Uh, the security argument there is that, you know, as all our queries are being processed in these places, uh, we would rather have them processed in places where we have control rather than in places that we don't have control where an adversary could potentially go in and take every query that you're running, you know, asking an AI model one day and uh, potentially, uh, you know, blackmail you, you know, for Bitcoin or whatever, right? So we've seen these extreme cases happen. Uh, so there's a national security argument there. There's an economic argument there that uh, I've, I've heard being made as well. Well, you mentioned AI modeling because it's not just chips, uh, and you mentioned it in the very beginning. They are also restricting some of the modeling that's already been done in other technology, right? Absolutely, right. So if you interact with uh, some of the latest open AI models, uh, these are closed models, right? But but the uh, the performance of some of these latest open AI models uh, is just incredible in terms of some of the things it can do right out of the bat. And so the expectation is that companies like Google, uh, Microsoft, OpenAI, and you know, Amazon through Anthropic and so on will continue to invest in these very high-end models. And many of these are actually closed. The weights are not released to the public. And ultimately, they are going to be using the best models when they have consumer applications or enterprise applications. And question again is, where do you want these models to run? Right. And and so the restriction there is to make sure that some of these high-end closed models are also uh, only going to run in either in the U.S. or in countries that are allies. Like this is what the uh, I think the administration is trying to achieve as well. And there's the military application of artificial intelligence. That's right. We've been talking about uh, consumer applications, data centers, and so on. Uh, but there's the use of AI in uh, the military and defense equipment, right? So a lot of the most advanced, say, drones and others today are using AI computer vision to detect objects and potentially, um, you know, do things as well, right? So, you know, if you forward a few years, you might think of future generation warfare as between either missiles or other systems that are all AI powered. And in this world, speed is everything. Right. So if you're defending against something, you know, having that, you know, microsecond or, you know, tiny advantage over an adversary can potentially help you uh, combat an attack. Right. right. Because and, I've seen the technology, for example, they're developing drones that fly with manned jet fighters as exactly. like their wingmen. And those drones are <laughs> AI controlled. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's that split, if you can make the jets fly with AI, or the missiles launch with AI, or the um, uh, ships sail with AI, and they make those decisions faster than a human, you have the advantage on the battlefield, right? We've seen this happen in financial, uh, in, in trading and Wall Street. You know, 25 years back, there was this, uh, you know, fascinating TED talk on how um, entire buildings were being hollowed out in New York City to put servers that were sitting right on top of fiber optic cables because they could place stock market orders quicker than any other place, right? So that fraction of a second advantage you get in the financial markets to placing an order for somebody else uh, can have a massively multiplicative effect, you know, and, and has brought in hundreds of billions of dollars in profits because of high-frequency trading, right? So speed in some worlds, right? Finance, it's shown. And and defense, for sure, right? I think the example you uh, had makes perfect sense where you have these machines and you have two things at each other. The fraction of a second advantage that one has on the other makes all the difference. And and so this is, I think, a, a, you know, a, a fairly important point as well, which is why I think the defense argument um, I don't want to say makes sense, but it, you know it, it, that's why people are legitimately um, concerned about if if you have certain technology that can make your uh, uh, you know defense equipment a little faster, you know, do you necessarily want others to have the same? And so that's there's going to be an arms race there. Uh, now I'm not sure whether the chips uh, control or export will achieve that purpose, but I think the discussion we're having here is essentially in, an important one, which is 
as AI gets used in these types of applications, speed is going to matter and precision is going to matter as well. And so some of the thinking behind these rules come from that perspective as well. Hmm. Thank you so much for your perspective. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. That was Balaji Padmanabhan, director of the Robert H. Smith School of Business Center for Artificial Intelligence in Business at the University of Maryland. You know, Lori, there's so much at stake here because whoever controls artificial intelligence controls the future. It's um, it's so crazy how much it can ultimately impact so many things and change humankind on Earth in a way. Well, you know, if you you let's reference the movies. You know, if Our Skynet brains. Skynet develops, you know, right. Right. It becomes sentient, then, you They'll know. They'll be smarter than us. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. That well, was the whole premise of the, I guess the so. movie, right? You and I, I might be sitting here and not really talking to you. It might be a... They make AI like models AI of us. AI model of each of us. <laughs> I want to come back taller, though. Well, in The Matrix, you know, you get to basically look like you want to look. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. You've been listening to The Issue. From the Voice of America. On behalf of all of us here at VOA in Washington and around the world, thanks so much for joining us. You can follow The Issue on X, Blue Sky, and Facebook at VOA The Issue. And for news 24-7, check out our website, voanews.com. In Washington, I'm Lori London. And I'm Scott Walterman. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>